Welcome back to our channel. My name is Chris Roberts and this is Roberts Dev Talk. Now, if you're building .NET applications with Entity Framework Core that talk to SQL Server, you may have noticed that the official Microsoft documentation heavily encourages the use of the code first approach. And this is fine when you're perhaps working from a clean slate or on a greenfield project. However, in many real world scenarios, there's an existing database that perhaps has hundreds of tables and views with existing data in it. So is there any way to create an entity framework database model context from an existing database? Well, thankfully, yes, there is. It's a tool called Scaffold DB Context. And in this video, I'll show you how you can use it both from the .NET CLI and from Visual Studio. Let's get started. Let's take a look first at our sample database. This is a fairly standard company database that you might find in any CRM application. It contains some tables to hold customers, products and orders along with some custom views on that data. We want to create a database context with code based models to represent this schema. And to do that, we'll use a tool called scaffold DB context. And I'll show you how to use it first from the .NET CLI and then from within Visual Studio. In order to use the CLI, we'll need the EF.NET tool installed. To check if you have this installed, head to your favorite console and run the command .NET tool list dash dash global. It appears I have the EF tool already installed. If .NET EF does not appear in your list, you can install it using the command .NET tool install dash dash global .NET EF. Now, here I have a simple .NET worker project I created earlier, and I want to create a database first model that I can use to access my generic company SQL database. Before I can do that, I need to add a couple of packages to my project. From within the project folder, head to the terminal and install the packages microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sqlserver and microsoft.entityframeworkcore.design. Now I'm ready to use the EF tool to create my database first context. Again, from the terminal, run the command .NET EF DB context scaffold. This command takes a few parameters, the first being the connection string for our database. The next is the database provider we wish to use, microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sqlserver. By default, the tool will drop our model files straight into the project root. So to keep things a bit tidier, let's use the output directory parameter to put our files in a models folder. The tool will also specify a default name for our database context class. So we can override that with the context parameter. Let's call our class company DB context. And by default, the tool will build the project first. So if we want to skip that step, then we need to use the no build command. Bear in mind, you'll need to have built the project at least once for the tool to work. Now let's run the command. And we see that apart from a little reminder about keeping secrets out of source code, a successful run will be pretty much silent. In our folder tree, we notice we now have a models folder and that we have files for each of our database tables and views and a company DB context class that we can use to access the model. So now we've seen how to use a CLI to generate our database first model. Let's see how it can be done from Visual Studio. First off, let's open the NuGet package manager and install the package microsoft.entityframeworkcore.tools. Once that's installed, we can open the package manager console and run the scaffold DB context from there. The command is much the same as its CLI equivalent, but uses the PowerShell naming convention and parameter format. So let's run scaffold dash DB context, specify the connection string with dash connection, the provider with dash provider, override the default output folder with dash output dire, and the name of the context class with dash context. Running the command gives the same output as the CLI. And as you can see, we now have our database tables translated into C sharp classes. Well, I hope you found that tip useful. This is one of those tasks that I have to Google and dig through documentation every time I use it. So if you find it useful too, then please do drop us a like and a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see other .NET related videos, then click on the playlist up here. Or if you'd like to see how to run SQL Server in a Docker container, yes, actual SQL Server in a container, then click on the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Happy coding.